Okay, any questions so far what you have discussed? So we have been discussing, uh, I think in the last class we talked about uh, limit theorems, right? Law of large numbers and center limit theorem. Okay, now as we move from probability to statistics, now what we will be doing is uh, we will be trying to look mainly at the data and trying to see that from which underlying distribution or what are the parameter associated with the distribution that is likely generating this data. Whereas the probability was about we already took some distribution and try to understand its properties and uh, in probability like we already start with some distributions all the parameters everything is known and according to that we talk about data being generated. Now in the statistics we do not start with distribution directly. We may start with some model of the distribution but we do not know its complete characterization. We do not know what are its parameter. But we will start we will have access to the data and from that data we will try to see that what is the underlying distribution or what are the parameters of that underlying distributions. Okay, for that let us have a quick recall on all the distributions we talked so far. We will expand this in this class today, but uh, as a recap in the discrete case we talked about Bernoulli, binomial, geometric and Poisson and notice that all of them are coming with certain parameters okay and also in the continuous case we talked about uniform, exponential, Gaussian, Raleigh and I think uh, we made some remark about other distributions like a Laplace distribution and couple of other distributions. Now if I tell that okay data is normal with mean and sigma square I may say that data is coming according to the law which is Gaussian with parameter sigma and sigma mu and sigma square. I may just say that okay data is coming from some Gaussian distribution with some parameter mu sigma square. If I specify what is the value of mu, let us say if I tell mu is 0.5 or some value like sigma square is 1, then I have completely specified the distribution and here you do not you somebody do not need to give you data, you can yourself generate the data as using this parameter. So, this is like if I tell this parameter this is completely specifying your probability this is like a probability. On the other hand I may say that okay data is coming from some distribution which I am going to assuming to be mu square but mu is unknown and maybe sometimes even sigma square is also unknown. What here what I am just assuming data is going to be I am instead of assuming some arbitrary distribution I am going to restricting to Gaussian distribution, but here I am I just do not know what is that parameter mu and sigma square are. Now in statistics, we will try to infer this parameter mu and sigma square from data. Okay, so sometime infer we call sometime we called estimate and all like we will make that more formal. Okay, so to infer these parameters we need data and that is why even though we start with some underlying probability model when I talk about statistics I will always say that we will start with data and from that data we have to find out the parameter of the distributions. Okay, now as I said in we will want to little bit 
expand our family of distributions we know and see what are the parameters they are associated with. Okay, the first distributions we are going to look into is gamma distribution. Here I can't write, so I can't write in this, I will just use the mouse. Gamma distribution is parameterized by two parameters, alpha and lambda. Both alpha and lambda are positive. And last time we discussed the definition of gamma function, right? So we all know the classic gamma function, but that gamma function can be further parameterized. Okay, with some parameter. Like uh, if you just uh, if you ignore this uh, denominator and uh, let la lambda equals to one, so that is x to the power alpha minus one e to the power minus x. When you integrate it between zero to certain number, that will define the gamma function at that number. But now you can bring in this another parameter lambda. So then if you add la alpha to the power lambda x alpha minus 1 and e to the power minus lambda x that is like a generalization of your gamma function and now if you see that if you normalize this integral by this actual integrand you will see that this actually when you integrate it over the whole range from 0 to infinity this normalizes to 1 this integrates to 1 that is what we discussed last time right. So this is a valid probability density function. So this is positive valued and area under this curve is 1, okay. Now as you see, I have plotted it in two scenario. In the first scenario, I have hold this lambda to be constant to 0.2 and then I am wearing alpha. As you see that as uh, I go from alpha equals to 1 to 2 to 3, when alpha equals to 1, this is like a monotonically decreasing. When I made alpha equals to 2, it started first increasing and then decreasing. And uh, as I'm increasing alpha, it looks like it is started only showing increasing behavior. So that is why when you have, when you, if you look into different value of alpha, it is shape is changing it from monotonically decreasing to all the way monotonically increasing. So the shape is changing that is what we call this alpha as shape parameter. And here I have plotted for a fixed alpha different value of lambda. When it is lambda equals to 0.1 it was like monotonically increasing but it also showing some small tendency of decreasing. When lambda equals to 0.2 this is also uh, increasing and decreasing lambda equals to 0.3 increasing and decreasing. So as, as we are increasing lambda, it is taking larger and larger values in some particular peak regions, right. So basically what it is happening lambda is in kind of scaling and that is also kind of a, uh, evident from this maybe not so evident. But anyway, uh, as you see like uh, as we are increasing lambda, it is kind of scaling like y values are getting more scaled. Not uh, across entire range, but in some particular regions where the peak is happening. Okay, because of this, so sometimes this is also called scale parameter. Now, even though we have discussed this gamma function gamma distribution in terms of gamma function, it has relation to some previous distribution that we know. What is that? Suppose you take some integer n and take n number of Gaussian distributions that are sorry n number of exponential distributions coming from parameter lambda with lambda and they are all iid if you add them the resulting distribution is exactly going to follow this pdf that is it is going to be 
gamma with parameter n and lambda okay so this gamma distribution can be interpreted as gamma distribution when n is integer it can be uh, interpreted as sum of n iid exponential random variables with parameter lambda so basically the gamma distributions we can now take any value of n and lambda right because these are n and lambda are parameters it's not necessary we have say we have never said that so far in the gamma distribution n has to be integer only as a special case we showed that when n is integer then gamma is related to the sum of iid exponential random variables so now let's look into what happens if i restrict myself to some specific values of alpha and lambda so here i have taken alpha equals to half and lambda equals to half so here the first parameter not integer i can interpret it as a sum of half exponential uh, random variable with parameter half i can interpret but uh, this distribution gamma half and half this has a special name and special significance this is called chi square distribution with one degrees of freedom and it is denoted as this uh, this uh, symbol chi with subscript 1 one. one is denoting here one degrees of freedom and uh, chi square the two is uh, the superscript 2 is denoting chi square okay in the gamma distribution if you are going to set alpha equals to 1 and uh, lambda equals to half this is the distribution you will end up the simplified one for the specific value of alpha and now you may be wondering okay fine you have taken alpha equals to half then where is this 1 degrees of freedom why that term is coming okay and just uh, to see that why could that why this has been given the name of 1 degrees of freedom so suppose let's take uniform distribution sorry uh, let's say u is some random variable which is normal distributed now you can show that if you take the square of that that has this gamma distribution that is square of a normal distribution is chi square distribution with 1 degrees of freedom okay you see that now u is i have just taken u to be one random variable it can take any value as per that uh, probability density and if i just square it i'm getting gamma distribution and here u is a uh, one component which can take any value it likes as per that okay and if i'm just squaring that i'm getting this gamma distribution okay okay next there is another if you now this instead of uh, gamma half and half if you take gamma n by 2 and half okay now this is also given a special name this is just like extension of this chi square distribution with n degrees of freedom and here n is like an integer and that is denoted as chi square with a subscript of n so then what is chi square distribution with n degrees of freedom this is nothing but a gamma distribution with parameter n by 2 and half and if i plug in the value n by 2 and uh, half in this pdf you will you will get back this value now again this chi square distribution with n degrees of freedom this is again related to other distributions so let's say if you have 
n random variables n iid random variables i am now considering two cases case 1 where all of the random variables have normal distribution if you square them and add that will have chi square distribution with n degrees of freedom so when n equals to 1 when this n equals to 1 we had already this this case that we have gotten so it's not just that only gaussian is related to this uh, gamma distributions you can even verify that if all this uis are exponentially distributed with parameter half and if you are going to add them and all of them are iid then also you will get gamma distribution with parameter n comma half notice that here it is not n by 2 it is n here and now even though i have stated them here you should check this check this this is indeed correct okay make sure that if you are going to add all this um, if you generate n iid random variables which are normal and if you are going to add them you will indeed get this chi square distributions okay now let me see i think at some point we should actually start simulating this and see 